My name is Anders Jensen. Let's learn some UiPath. Today we will see how we can solve the RPA challenge number 9 about dynamic selectors on Google. The case is quite simple. We got a list of company names like Memphis, Infosys, Google, Dell, HP and Lenovo and we want to find the CEO for each of the companies. So what we'll do is that we'll go to Google and for example type in Dell CEO presenter and then we want to get this text up here into a data table or an excel sheet or whatever however there will be a problem because this this selector is dynamic so it changes all the time for whatever name we will type in and that uh, is a problem that we need to solve mm. there's a solution here in where we it when which involve get attribute activity however i think we can make it a bit more simple so let's try that by the way, if you want more of these videos, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get all the new videos about UiPath and RPA. So let's get started. We can just navigate to start Google and then we go to our UiPath. Do this with me. Uh, open up UiPath and do the operations and you can just pause the video. It's designed for that. First, we will build our data. So find a build data table and this one let us drag this in. And this one is where we store our company names and where we will store our CEO names when we find them. First, we will select an output, so Control K. This one will be DT, you can call it data, call it whatever you want. Then we will go down to variables and inspect that we created a data table with the name DT data. Now we can choose what we want in it. So uh, we'll open it by clicking here on data table. We'll delete everything in it and then we'll create two new columns. We want one column with the company name in, like this, and then we want one column with the CEO, like this. And then we can tap uh, out the column names here, uh, the, the company names in this column, and the company names is Memphis, Info, Sys, Google, Dell. And by the way, if we try to, we can see here that if we type in like Google CEO, we will get the, uh, this text here. However, let's try to type in HP CEO. We can see that we get no text. We could solve this by either drawing an exception where, um, with a, in a try catch. We could uh, try to find a name like elsewhere on this Google page, or we can just ignore the name in the data. I think we will ignore it here, but now you know how you can solve that part so that there is no HP CEO text here. So we will just ignore it. Let me get back to our data table. So we'll say Dell and then we want Lenovo like this. So now we got our data, right? Let us navigate to the front page of Google again. So we got our data. Then first we want to open up a browser and go to Google. So find a open browser, drag this guy in. I like to work with Internet Explorer since that's most, most static, it doesn't get updated, so uh, this flow will usually work. So we can just select IE or that's the default, so we don't actually have to do anything. So now we can uh, navigate to Google and we will just use the first uh, part of this. So this address, copy it, then we can go to variables and we will select our sequence here. We'll create a variable called str Google as a string. And we'll type in the address here, like that. Then we could um, go up here and type in str Google. So now we are navigating to Google. Then we want to uh, make a for each, and we want to make it for uh, for each for each of these rows. We want to make a search for this uh, company name and the CEO. So let's have a type into like this. We will indicate where we want to type it in. So click here in the blue text, and we will type it in here in the search field, right? What do we want to type in? We want to have a for each row first. So we want to iterate through each of the values. So that one will go here and then we will let us delete this body and then we'll just drag this type into here into this for each row. So now we're iterating through each of the names. So that'll be for each row in our data table like this. Then we want to type something in. What do we want to type in? We want to type in for the current row, that's row. Then we want to type in what's in the company column, so row item. That's the column, that's the column. Row item, and we call it company, right? And then to string. And then we wanna uh, have a blank, and then CEO. And finally, we wanna click enter. So click the plus, and click enter. 
Then for each search, we want to navigate back to start, so to this str Google. That was the HTTP Google. So find a navigate to. Drag this guy in underneath. And we will just navigate to str Google. So now we can make the search. We can see if that works. So let me close down Internet Explorer. And we can run it. And we can see if we could uh, fine tune our uh, workflow. It will run in a moment. Now we run, we open up uh, Google, we type in a search. We can see here that uh, we don't really type the search in right. We have some delay on it, so we don't type in everything. So why is that? Well, let me close this down again. That's usually because we uh, the delay between the keys are too low it's the default is 10 milliseconds we can change it here so if you're experiencing this we can just set this up usually i'll set it to like two or three hundred so maybe three hundred five hundred will definitely solve it but it will make the robot slower so this one is a good trade-off between robustness and speed let's try to run it again <clears throat> we'll wait a few seconds now we will go to google and we can see that it is a bit slower. However, we type everything right. Go info. We can see that it actually works now. So we solved that part of uh, the challenge, even though it wasn't a challenge from the beginning. So let's click stop. And now we just need to store the text that we get here. So uh, uh, let me have the, uh, what was it? For example, the Dell CEO. We want to store this text and that was where the challenge uh, began because that we need to make that dynamic. So let's find a get text. We'll indicate what we want to store. So indicate the text here, smile Dell in this case. We store it to a variable. So control K over here, str CEO, like this. And now we can look at the selector. So usually we want to click the three ribbons, click edit the selector, and then we can open up in UI Explorer because we need to change this. We probably need to change this as well, and then the selector won't work, so we need to add something. We can talk about what we usually do. So we open up in UI Explorer, and then we'll wait a bit, because that is actually a bit slow. We need to, now we got it here. And what we will do here is that we will, first we will just uh, indicate the element again. So um, that's here. And now we will run, and we can see that all the selector uh, elements that we can choose is here. So from the top, from up here, that's usually the wide uh, selector, and then we are moving down further down at the tree, and we can see here that we got our selector. So what we need to tune here is that this one is Google Search and Danish, that's fine. However, this one will change, because now it's still, but uh, the next time it will be Google or Lenovo or whatever, so we will have an asterisk here. So now we can take every CEO search that we got. Then we want to have this name, well, this will change as well, so an asterisk here as well. And this parent ID, I think that will change too, so let's just hit TS UID, we will have an asterisk now. But the problem is that we now we made it too generic, so it won't work, and then we need to think about what we can do. Well, usually, we uh, this one is the first element on the page, so we want to have the IDX uh, part of the selector with us. So let's go here. Let's see if we can find that. Um, it's not really here, but usually it, it's in this sleeve. So click this one here. And we can see that we, uh, it was an is leaf. Uh, we don't add it, so uh, let's find it. Um, we can uh, think that this one will work, that the ID, IDX is here. However, now we can see that we change this again. So we need to um, change this. Uh, the Dell CEO here and this. Sorry. So I think we created a dynamic selector because this one will take the first element. We can click save. Then we can try to uh, run the workflow. We can just run it now. Now we'll just get the text and store it into a variable because if this works, then we can uh, just store it into our data table afterwards. That's quite easy. Now we'll try to run it. And if it stops, we know that we didn't create the selector right. So we need to probably have the IDX with us as well. So now we search. And we can see if it stops now, then we know we uh, 
need to fine tune our selector more. Now we can see that it actually stopped. That's because it doesn't work. So then we go to UiPath. This is a good solution in how to create a dynamic selector. So then we click the tree ribbons here. We click to edit the selector and we can see that it doesn't work. So uh, then we can click repair. That's a good one. That's a new uh, feature from UiPath. So click repair. Then we need to uh, mark it again here. So now we say UiPath tells us that the selector was updated to match the live event. We can see here that we indeed uh, updated this IDX and I don't think we need this else leaf anymore, to be honest. So uh, let's uh, click OK, then we close down uh, Internet Explorer and then we can run it. So now UiPath help us. That's a good update that UiPath gave us. Now uh, it will help us creating a dynamic selector easily so we don't have to guess ourselves. So use the repair if you can. Now we will make a search. Again, it's a bit slow, but that's uh, because we wanted to make our robot. Now we can see that we actually we are running the workflow. Let's see if we can get past the this one as well. We do. So now it looks like that we actually uh, have made a dynamic selector. Let's start the workflow. Close this one down and uh, try to open up this. So let's stop it. And now we just need to store this into our data table and write it out. So uh, what we'll do here is that we'll have a sign here. And we need to um, so we need to know where what row we are in. So up here for each row we'll create an index variable. So control K, call this it index, like this. And then down here we will store it. So first we will store it into our data table, right? And then uh, the row number, so that's rows, that's just the index that we have here because this one will count. So for the first one, it's uh, row number one, zero, then one, two, two, three, four. So we'll just have a int index here, like this. And then we'll have the item, that will be the CEO column, item is a, a column, so CEO. So this one will store into our data table, it will store into the, the current row that we're iterating to, in the CEO column. What do we want to store? We just want to store the get text the str CEO that we find found up here, and that's it. Then we could um, so out of the uh, this for each row, we can now we can print out the data table. So uh, let's uh, have a output data table just to see that we've done everything right. That'll be here, and the input data table that's the DT data, and we will uh, create a new variable here. Control K that'll be str. Uh, data. That's the string. So now we print out our data table. We could of course print it out to an Excel sheet or however. We just want to write it out to a line. You can easily do the solution yourself into an Excel sheet. I created a tutorial about that. By the way, if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. That will really help me a lot. So this one will uh, write out into str data. Now we can try to run it again to inspect that we actually got it right. Now I run and we will look at the workflow. Now it runs, open up Google, type in uh, search. We can see that we actually need to fine tune um, our selector a bit more. It, uh, we need to have the delay uh, a bit more up because it forgot one character. So maybe 500 will be right, but I think it will work uh, this time. Mm, we don't have any errors, but now you know that uh, you can uh, sort it by uh, Stopping the delay between keystrokes. The normal CEO was that our last? Yep. Then we can go to right line to inspect our data. And we can see that we indeed now updated the data table with the CEO names. So that's it for today. We solved the RPA challenge number nine about dynamic selectors. Have a good day. Bye bye.